Hello everyone, welcome to this module on system specification. My name is Tim Vermeil and in this session I will tell you a little bit about how to design your system for an electric bus operation. So, my name is Tim Vermeil, I work as a commercial project manager at VDL Bus and Coach in the Netherlands. The VDL Bus and Coach is a manufacturer of electric public transport buses, coaches and some other projects uh, and we are producing all our buses in the Netherlands and Belgium. In my job, I'm mainly focused at the whole commercial project of selling public transport buses in my countries, Denmark, Italy, uh, but also the Middle East and Eastern Europe, depending on where there is an interesting project going on for electric public transport buses. My main focus is on the, um, the conversations with the customer to define what kind of system they need, and system means bus, chargers, infrastructure and but also the installation of the infrastructure and even repair and maintenance of buses. So a big part of my job is what I'm going to explain to you um, on how to think about designing your system for this kind of operations. Our product portfolio at Vita Bus and Coach consists of coaches, public transport buses and smaller projects. So we have our coach VDL Futura, also available as a double deck. Uh, there is uh, the VDL CTEA, which is our public transport platform, available from 9.9 .9 all the way until 18.1 meter full electric vehicles. And as of this year, we will start delivering our new generation CTEA, which is a public transport bus designed completely from scratch. We also do conversions on Mercedes Printer, Volkswagen, e crafter buses for mini and mini bus operations. Together with DAF, we, uh, we are producing the electric truck for them, which shares the exact same driveline as we use in our public transport buses. We do some innovations like the hydrogen range extender that we have that you can connect to an electric bus to increase the range of the bus. And the same module you could also place into a trailer and therefore link to an electric bus and increase to the electric truck and range, increase the range of this truck. So on system specifications, when you want to transition from the diesel to an electric vehicle, uh, there are a lot of things you have to think about. When you have the diesel vehicle, you can drive the whole day and then at the end of the day, you go back to the depot, you refill, and then you're ready to drive again for the whole day. With an electric bus, that's slightly different because you have a battery on board, which has compared to a diesel bus, uh, less range. So you have to think of a way how to design your system of operation in a clever way uh, and to be able to drive with your electric buses. There are a lot of things you have to consider while designing electric system. For example, what kind of time schedule do I have? Um, what kind of range do I want? Where can I charge? How can I charge? What kind of battery size do I need? What's the climate I'm driving in? And do I need a lot of heating, a lot of cooling? And can I use, for example, a diesel preheater uh, or is that not allowed by, by the government? Uh, so a lot of things to consider and I will explain some in more detail during this presentation. First of all, this charging strategy and the charging location. So where can, are you able to charge? Can you charge in the city or can you charge only in your own depot? Now, some different options that you have. First of all, opportunity charging, which is charging on the line uh, with a fast charger, so you have a short time charging a lot of energy during, for example, the driver brake or when the passengers are leaving the bus. You can also have the option to do the only slow charging in the depot during the night. So at the end of the operation, you go back and you slow charge and ready for the next day. There's also the option to fast charge at the depot because depot charging not necessarily means overnight charging, but it also can be opportunity fast charging during the day. And the last option that you have is switching the buses when one is empty, make sure that there is a fully charged bus available at the end stop or which location is convenient to switch buses and then continue the service with that fully charged bus. And every solution has its own advantages and disadvantages. To show you how it looks like is this is for example the operation with a battery overnight charging bus. Uh, you have a big battery which you can use for the whole day and then you charge only during the night. So you will start at 100% drive all day and then in the end just before the battery is empty you return to the depot. 
opportunity charging, you most often have a smaller battery uh, that you have to charge multiple times during the day. You do that, for example, at the end stop, and then you will not reach the, um, the full capacity of the battery. You just reach, for example, 60%. And then in a few minutes, you can charge it completely full again and continue service throughout the day until the end of the, the operation. So when you have chosen the type of uh, chargers that you can use, what kind of charging location, uh, you could think about what kind of battery system do I need. So do you want to drive a long range with only depot charging? Of course, then you need to have a high capacity battery pack, which also is more heavy and that can result in a reduced amount of passengers on board. A different option, of course, is the high power battery, which uh, can have really high charging power, so in just a short time you can charge it completely full again, but that will often have a limited range. So you have to think on what kind of range do I need and what kind of capacity uh, will you need then for the battery. What kind of charging power do you need that is linked to the time available for charge? Is it only five minutes on every end stop during the coffee break or do we have uh, one hour available during the in between the rush hours, for example. What kind of repair and maintenance cost uh, do you want to accept? So uh, maybe the warranty conditions can be different that the suppliers offer you. The total weight of the battery pack is really important for the passenger capacity that you can take because of course buses can have a maximum weight including all the passengers. So the more heavy the bus itself, including the battery is, the less passengers you can take. And then the last pricing the bigger battery tends to be more expensive battery. Not always the case, but it is something to consider in designing your system. To show you an example of different scenarios, I've made some energy consumption calculations to show you what happens depending on the charging strategy that you follow. In this case, I used a 12 meter electric bus, the VDL Citea, with a 350 kilowatt hour battery pack in an operation that drives in uh, 30 uh, 30 degrees Celsius, so quite a warm city environment, for example, like my country, Italy. Uh, quite a high daily kilometer of 230 kilometers, a long uh, operational hours, and an average speed of 18 kilometer hours per hour. The first solution that you could think of is slow overnight charging, so only charging in the depot during the night. If you want to do that in this high uh, high temperature environment, you will not be able to make the service throughout the whole day. So somewhere in the evening, the bus will be, em will be empty and you have to think of a different solution. You could go for a bit of bigger battery pack if that's available by the manufacturer, but you could also think about a different charging strategy. So for example, fast depot charging, meaning you go back to the depot somewhere during the day and recharge your bus there. That could look like this. So you drive until let's say one or two o'clock, then you go back to the depot, you need a charging session of 25 minutes because your bus is not completely empty halfway the day. Uh, you use a fast charger so it's quite quick and then you can continue the service for the rest of the day again. Of course, you need to have a bus that can cover the trips that you are charging with at all of us. So you need to switch buses at one of the, uh, the end stops, for example and then continue the service with that one while this bus is charging. A different solution is fast opportunity charging, meaning charging on the line at one of the end stops. And in this example, you would need one charger at one end stop and charge for five minutes every one and a half hour. And that way you are able to operate your bus all the way uh, until the end of the day and reach only a set of charge of 40% at the end. So, these are the three options that you can have and think about a bit bigger battery pack or different charging locations. To conclude, and this is very simplified as this presentation is more or less an introduction on things you can think about because there are like a million things you can think on when uh, designing your uh, system for public transport buses. First of all, I think you should choose the line which you want to electrify and not necessarily look at which is the best line to electrify, but just which line do I want to electrify. Of course, it has to be within all reason that you are able to do that. It should not be 1000 mile uh, distance, but choose a line. Secondly, think about all the key parameters that you, uh, you have to consider, charging time, the time schedule, uh, 
uh, maybe also requirements by the government on your operation. Define the different locations that you could charge. Can you get a permit to place a charger in the city? Can you only charge outside of the city uh, at the train station? Or maybe you can charge only in your depot. And do you then charge oh, uh, with opportunity charging, fast charging in the depot or overnight charging only? Do you have sufficient time to charge? Is there a break? Is there a, a difference between rush hour operation or um, yeah, what time do you have to charge? And, or can you reschedule your planning uh, of the drivers or the buses to make some time to charge? And then if you know all these parameters, you can calculate the best shooting battery pack for your operation and then start driving with your system. So that's it. Thank you for your time. There is another video also on how to optimize your fleet, which is more linked to this one as well. So check that video out as well. And um, yeah, again, thank you. And uh, good luck with thinking about the system specification.